what I, I really wanted to talk to you about um, what really got you started? Because you, we really have like these talks about you personally. I don't know what's much in personally. Wait, wait. This now, is a martial arts. Okay, hold on, hold on. Show. This is about martial arts in your life, right? Okay. All right. So, what? At what point? What event? Because mm -hmm. I have an event in my life. Mm -hmm. But what event? I think is in every martial arts life. Martial arts life. Mm -hmm. What event pushed you into learning martial arts? Okay. Um, I wasn't an active kid. Well, I was active, but I didn't like sports. So, growing up, I was active in the church. I was active, I'm big into camping and uh, bugs. I loved collecting bugs and stuff when I was a kid. I was a nerd. I liked going on nature walks. I wanted to know all the names of every bug, every tree, every leaf. I wanted to know about, yeah, weird stuff. I wanted to know about rocks. I wanted to know about God. I wanted to know about uh, his creation, his great creation, planet Earth. So it was all about, like, Dad, why does this beetle have this forehead? <laughs> you know? That was interesting to me as a kid. Why is this grass grasshopper shaped this different way? I wanted to know. Uh, I thought they were really cool. I wanted to catch snakes. I wanted to do all these things. So because I was a nature nerd, um... You know, I got singled out. That and being, uh, I, you know. So you mean singled out as far as picked on? Is that what pushed you yeah, to Yeah, it was really being picked on. Do you remember the name of the bully? I don't. Okay. I don't. I remember what he looked like. Can I have the event? What What was the fight? What was the Gym class. <laughs> what, what hit your martial arts switch? What's, what yeah. went and was like, that's it? Well, there was a couple of things that were prior to the moment that you speak of. That were weird. Hmm. That my dad tells me stories of. So the camel that uh, broke the camel's back, but the straw that broke the camel's back. It was weird events. Mm -hmm. Like um, I was at a party at uh, McDonald's playground when I was in kindergarten, and the, these boys were picking on this girl, trying to hit her, and it's just I, I snapped, and I grabbed this kid and I put him in uh, uh, Uda Kubi Nukishime. Now, did you know what that was? I somehow it just made sense. But you didn't have any martial arts training at this point. No. Wow. But that made sense. It made sense to enter properly. Can Can you just demonstrate? Yeah. This, uh, okay. Uh, so, okay. I know so, it's a chill. So basically, what happened was yeah. okay. The, the The girl. It was like the arms were on the girl. And I don't remember this completely because I was in kindergarten, right? But they were over here. Oh, so okay. Like arms are over here on the girl. And I grip the arms here, pass them, and grip the oh, neck. I do like this, Kubi. and then and then I slip, <laughs> I slip behind him, what? Like this, and suck my hip in, and choked him over my body. What? At now, how old were you then? I was five. Five years old. You're you're throwing people into yeah. techniques you don't even know. And, I, and I choked them out. Holy cow! Yeah, I, that was my first choke out. And I just kept squeezing and pulling. Now, see, this is great for me because this is stuff I, I never knew. My dad, who had martial arts experience, he was a boxer. And he got into a lot of street fights growing up in New York and stuff. Especially because of who his stepfather was. But anyway. Yeah. Go ahead and go on that tangent. It wasn't good. Um, okay, it's so... We're talk. We'll come back. All right, so um, I don't know how much he wants, like... Oh, family stuff. Sorry. Sorry. So, without giving away too much, my dad had it recognized skills. Just because he he was a street fighter, not not that he wanted to be, just that he was thrust. That was thr thrusted upon him, and uh, and he he was a Golden Gloves boxer. And when I was in kindergarten, you know. Um, parents are talking. You know, this is what you did. Your son. What are you teaching your son? You know, what do you teach him? Military tactics or something? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I'm not teaching my son anything. He says, David, come here, show me what you did to the kid. He's like, well, I just did this. And I showed my dad, and he was like, <laughs> where the heck did that come from? Yeah, it's a serious technique. You know, me. where did that come from? Yeah. And uh, there was another instance. Um, I remember. What, would, what, what led up to that moment where your martial arts switch got flipped? That was in gym class. 
Uh, was in your class. It was, uh, this kid, he was just on me, on me all the time. Black curly hair, he had a mullet, I'll never forget it. And uh, I'm surprised I forget the kid's name. I went back years later to visit, because we moved a couple times. I went back years later to visit. I was a martial artist at this time, at this time. And I ran into that kid, and he was friends. He became, he was the bully. He was like the school bully. He became friends with all of my friends. And it was like time for payback. Because I had reached puberty, and I was like, <laughs> I had like, like, I had the glow, you know? <laughs> right? So, uh, I was his boots with his teeth. <laughs> this is great. So, uh, you know, I was just, I was ready to go, and I was, I was ready to fight this oh, guy. Oh, man. And I look at him, and he was like, he grew into, like, the skinny bench warmer. Oh, so he went down and He size. went down, or never grew. Mm. Like, he was always, like, the scary bully. Mm. And then I saw him, and I was like, what? You look the same as when we were eight or something. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? You know, so that was weird. Uh, but anyway, in gym class... You know, he pulls pulls the shoulder and just flap and hits me. Whoa, 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 whoa! Where did this what? come from? Yeah, out of nowhere, it just came out of nowhere. It was like, you know, I'm gonna kick your butt. I'm oh, so there was butt. like a banter like, back and forth. For like at lunch, uh, for like a week, and you know, my response too. He was like, I'm gonna kick your butt. I'm gonna kick your. You know, Chris sent me. My response was, so that didn't work. You know. <laughs> Like a deer. This, is a deer. this is my diplomacy. <laughs> so he finally gets the chance to clock you. And he did. I didn't see it coming, you know. It was I think it was like eight, seven or eight. I think it was eight. And uh I'm like walking to the volleyball court. You know, it was in gym class, they set up a net across the basketball court and I was walking toward the net. And he turned me around and he just hit me with everything he had. And boom. But he was, the thing was that he was ridiculing me for like 10 minutes prior to this. So that got my adrenaline rushing. I felt my heart beating in my chest. So he hits me. And honestly, I didn't feel it at all. Like I really didn't feel it at all. My friends had to tell me, I can't believe you took that hit. And I was like, what hit? Did you, you ever, that ever happen to you? When your adrenaline just, it's like this adrenaline dump. Oh, yeah. And you just, and you're like turned on, you're switched on, your heart's pushing out of your chest. And and uh, I turn, this thing hit, this guy hits me. And I just looked at him, scared out of my mind, really, mm -hmm. that he was going to hit me. I didn't even know that he did. And then he was looking back at me scared because I didn't flinch or anything from the hit that he just thought he gave me a good one and that was it that was the whole fight that was it there was no there was no fight mm -hmm. it just hit me nothing happened and he was like oh god he's, he's a beast like, oh god. I'm not gonna try that again right and I was going I hope he doesn't he's not gonna hit me <laughs> that was it so then after that point you were like I gotta train martial arts wait he did hit me like yeah, he hit you right across the face. Oh my gosh, I didn't see it coming. Nope. Oh, I think you could have really beat me up. It was my thinking. I better train martial arts. It was that, and like everybody else, I guess the Bruce Lee thing. There was not a, there wasn't a Bruce Lee movie that I watched. I don't even think I was allowed to watch that. That was like violence, you know. But there was the name Bruce Lee and it just meant badass mm -hmm. and it was like you hear these stupid stories about like oh do you know Bruce Lee can do this and Bruce Lee can do that this nonsense that kids make up on the playground and Bruce Lee's like a you know like a just a tale that, that, they, that, they're, that they tell it's just ridiculous and just snowballs yeah, yeah. It's like, did you ever hear this guy named this you know what he could do he fought dragons. Right? I remember that, man. Back when I was growing up, Bruce Lee was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. Which I always thought was weird. Like, I I, I had met uh, Bob Wall a few times, and uh, and I asked him. Bob Wall was in Bruce Lee's movies, and, and I had asked him. I said, Bob, I was like, what's with the Bruce Lee thing? Like, why does everybody think he was so great? Like, still, like, every martial arts magazine, he's all, in all of them. It's so weird. 
But uh, well, it, he he also Bruce also said he he didn't want to really be recognized as anything but a great actor. You know, he 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 you know he did put himself out there as a great martial artist, but he was more focused on you know he didn't want to be called a star. You know, he wanted to tell me I'm a great actor. Acting, acting, and he realized he was acting. Yeah. You know, all those amazing kicks and, and routines were all acts. They were all acts. Not that he wasn't a great martial artist, but uh, the focus was acting. So for whatever reason, you know, I got this into my head that martial arts was, was going to help me. You know, the, I was named after King David and the, the famous story of David and Goliath. Mm-hmm. Where he whips the stone with the sling at Goliath's head and drops him. And I thought, man, I'm not going to be able to carry around a sling. How am I going to do it? You know, how am I going to drop Goliath when he, when he comes? And there was enough kids in, in my life that were that were coming. So I was like, how am I going to defend myself? I had so many things against me. I mean, one, I was a nature nerd. Two, uh, there was the religion thing. I was just like, you know, people were upset. And I would be like, well, have you found Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You know, on a you know a six year old saying that to somebody, you're not gonna make a lot of friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, I had that going for me. Preacher uh, son, preacher son, yeah. So uh, I had that going for me, and the other thing I had going for me was I was dyslexic. So I was the kid, you know, when you had to read aloud in class, all the other kids were like, oh, God. oh you're that kid. Yeah. <laughs> And when I was nervous, that made me do it even worse. Yeah. You know, uh, the, 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 the tree, tree, uh, uh, in the, the, bo- 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 woods, you know, I was like, oh my gosh. And it took forever and kids hated me for, for that, you know, because everybody had to read a paragraph. My paragraph took until lunchtime. <laughs> you know, you know, it just was what it was. So, uh, and the nervousness made it a billion times worse. I mean, all you dyslexic, uh, well, that <laughs> dyslexic guys out there, you know what I'm talking about. Well, that explains why we sit in Cezar for so long. <laughs> what are you talking about? Joking. I'm totally joking. <laughs> totally joking. To, to, uh, to get the payback? Is that what <laughs> No, dyslexia. Oh, dyslexia. <laughs> how does that, I don't understand how that computes. But Never anyway. mind. Okay. We'll get it later. Maybe. I'm just seeing it backwards right now. Ah! <laughs> ah! Anyways, good. So, so you start training. What was your first? What was your first dojo? Do you remember the name of your first dojo? Your first oh, was, martial arts. It was uh, L Tri C Community College. Mm. It was my first martial arts school that I went to. I was uh, I was seven or eight. Yeah. I think I was seven. So, so what was your what was your that that guy hit me when I was seven? So good. Say what? Oh, that doesn't that doesn't make sense because the because I just said that the guy I was eight years old when the guy turned me, so I was probably like seven years old when he turned me because I know I went to martial arts after that. Oh, okay. Mom was pushing me to do some kind of sport. I didn't want to do sports, and uh, I got hit. So I was like, I'll do martial arts. Mom was like, All right. There's a class being offered at the community college. It's a summer course. I'll sign you up. So okay, I'm, and I'm going somewhere with this. So you you go to your first. Your mom sends you to this school, first school. What was your experience there? It was a kung fu school. Kung fu that did karate. Was it animal kung fu or was it like they got into? Was it? Um, some type of mantis style of kung fu but it just started with like karate horse stances and you know the reverse punch and you know the reverse punch into the block Mm -hmm. yeah I remember all that yeah Yeah, karate yeah okay for whatever reason it was a karate kung fu mess mix so from that experience what did you take from that experience as far as as physical art like when you when you you know think about the time when you reached like that highest level in that school, what did you get from it, and and what belt were you? Nah, I was a dropout. I didn't achieve very much at all. I I was I didn't believe in it. I I had to. The big story was that uh, 
the guy told me that I had to squat, right? And I had to sit in the horse stance. And I had to put my arms down. And I had to squat lower, lower, lower. And I had to put my legs, par feet parallel like I was on railroad tracks. And I had to squat. I was like, it hurts my legs. And he was like, no, that's supposed to happen. So, you know, the sensei was like, he was, you know, we called him sensei, but it was a kung fu school. Shouldn't we have called him Sifu and shouldn't we have been doing mm. Chinese movements? But no, we called him Sensei. It was all weird. Oh, the franchise place. Yeah, it, it was just weird. And he was a cop, and he was like, "This this art saved my life multiple times as I was a police officer." And da da da. So I was like, "All right, what do I know?" You know, being seven. Sensei. Yep. Uh, why are we in this horse stance? Was, you don't deserve the answer. Okay. He goes, you do this hard, you do this strong, you do this for two weeks, then you ask me, then you'll deserve the answer. I was like, oh, all right. So I'm going to squat, put my hands above my head like this, you know, because you got to... So I was doing that. Two weeks go by. My thighs are burning the whole two weeks. But I was like, I'm going to deserve this answer. So I ask him, Sensei, it's been two weeks after class. Can I have the answer? Let me see your horse dance. I squat all low. I'm proud of it. I'm not falling on my butt anymore. You know, when you squat a lot, you fall down. So I'm not falling on my butt anymore. I found my balance. I'm, I'm you know, I'm good. He tests out my arms. Are they, are they rigid? Are they strong? Yeah. He goes, okay, well, someone's going to swing a bat at your head. You put these up here and you stop the bat. You block and you save your life. And I'm thinking, if a guy swung a bat at my head, and I put these up there. He would break both of my wrists, wrists, and then he'd crack my head open. <laughs> After he broke your two shields, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't think this is gonna work. Oh my god, you know. And I just looked at my sensei, and he was all happy that he like provided this knowledge to me, and I was supposed to be happy to receive it, but it was just some bull. It was just bull. I couldn't believe it. Mm. You know, here comes this bat and I'm going to squat and make myself a bigger target <laughs> so that what he can't possibly miss and then I'm going to throw this up to meet him so, like, and so you can't evade if your legs are that spread apart you could never evade and the bat the, the reverse center you made huge so your off balance point is directly behind what he's throwing so it's like the worst thing that you could do and then throwing up your wrists like that when someone's swinging something at you, you don't want to swing something into it. You know, it's just <laughs> let me compound the force <laughs> against my own. It just doesn't make any sense. So, you know, I'm not buying it. And I'm seven. I'm just not buying it. So I walked away with martial arts is fake. That's what I walked away so with. So that's when you walked away. So then... Where at, okay, so you walk away. I, my mom kept sending me. She said, I paid for that course. What? Your mom yeah. sent you back? I paid for the whole course. You're going back there. I was like, uh, as soon as this course is over, I'm never going back. That was my thing. So I had to keep going back for a little bit, and then I, I missed as many classes as I could. And then, uh, yeah, I dropped out. I was a kung fu karate mix dropout. So you went back to uh, studying rocks and bugs and... And I loved nature. I was a nature nerd. Um, and it was shortly after that that uh, I tried I tried doing other martial arts. I went to see different schools and, and you know, I, I remember visiting... Uh, there's a big name in the area. It's Hoover Karate Academy. I remember visiting there and I wasn't into it. And then there was a... Bear Karate Academy. That was a big. That thing. sounds cool. Yeah, the last the guy's last name was Bear. So Oof. He had a big like polar bear for his mascot. Was he a big bear? Was he, he a big white guy? He was. Man. Huh? Yeah, he was. That's he pretty was. cool, man. Well, you know, as a kid, did he have like bear style? I don't know. Man, that would have been cool. Didn't make it, you know. Looked at it, I was like, I can't be here. What was it? Was it horse dances again? No, this was like. Twirling kata, like, and you didn't like that because they're walking around doing dances, and I was like, ah, oh, I want to see how to. Hey, but you're a good dancer. Take a man's eyes out. Oh, know? so your goal, so now your mentality was, I need to really be able to gouge an eye out. Well, All right. Well, my point was, I was taking you on a journey on in in your in your life as far as like 
like what you learned from each art that you trained, if there was anything you took from them, what positive things, what negative things you saw, what brought you to Soku Jitsu. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a lot of. Um, I am not doing that. It was a lot of that. You know, I spent. I tried to spend a year on each, but Kendo only got a day. I just couldn't do. Kendo. What was it about Kendo? I get in there. Everybody's dressed so darn cool. I mean, they just dressed awesome. That was pretty cool. But that was the only thing they had going for them. Was that before or after you understood the sword? I can't say that I understood it. I had an understanding of it. I, I had a brief understanding of it through my Genbukan background. There's no shortcuts. There's no easy route to this level. My training on the sensor was very severe when I first started training. So the reason why I visited a kendo school was one, there was a kendo school opening up in the area. That was huge. I was like, wow, kendo, really? <laughs> Two, I figured they only do swords, so they must really know the sword. And I wanted to understand better sword deflections. Some of the things that I had learned from the Genbukan experience, in my opinion, and not that I knew everything, but I just believe that there had to be more as far as the sword goes. And you Genbukan guys know what I'm talking about because I'm sure that you've researched it. And I'm not talking about Yaido, I'm talking about old world Kenjutsu. And if you look at the Koru Kenjutsu, you know, even if you like see some old videos of Don Drager and things, you know, just would be a great clip right there. You can see plainly that throughout his movement he maintains Tai Sego there is a strong presence Zan Shin Shin Tai Ho is stressed all things that are lacking in modern martial arts as far as I was concerned and why I was attracted to this you know that's that's where it's at you know you see this you know and I didn't have that, and I had some of that. I had a beginning to that, but I didn't have that. So I wanted that. So I visited this kendo school, and I saw no deflections. I, it was just about, you know, a thousand shomen giri. You're cutting with a shinai, which I thought was weird. Like, let's cut with a suburito, you know, a giant wooden sword. So we, like, rock our arm, and then we'll move to the bokeh, and, you know, and I asked them, you know, when do we train with the bokeh? And you don't train with the bokeh. Oh. Well, when do we train with a shinken? A live, you know, live sword. There's no need for that. Kendo is the artist of fencing. So it's more sport. All sport, we're just going to fence. Okay. Well, that's okay, because I'll still learn kick butt deflections. No, we don't deflect them. So they just let you strike? <laughs> there's like no, everybody's there's no hitting way. each other all the time. Wow. They're just weird. That's weird to train. You're training to die. Okay. I was out. <laughs> okay, so, but what good did you get from that? What, 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 did you what I got was like, I just got this belief, like, every martial arts experience that I had got me this belief that nobody knew what they were doing. Like, they did in their own field, but what about combat? I really started to not believe in martial arts. Mm. You know, like this mystery and this mysticism about these, these you know, Asians who came from foreign lands and they knew these secret methods of combat. What I'm seeing, no, they don't. So you know? was that when you got into firearms? <laughs> no, no, that was later. No. But, but no, they don't. You know, I just got this like feeling where it was like, no, I think I'll take a two-by-four to them. You know, that's what I think. You know, I think if anybody messes with me, I just pick up a rock or a hammer and just take them out. I just didn't, you know. I, I've always done that where, where 
you know, the matchup didn't work out, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right, because if a kendo practitioner is not learning how to block or, or deflect the incoming weapon, then that's a piece of cake. Yeah. That's a piece of cake. I say it to, today, to try to, to try to impart my perspective on other students of martial arts, I, I don't know if we covered this. Did we cover the, um, you know, the baseball player? I don't think we did. Okay, because this is what I this is what I say to people to impart um, my perspective. Because martial artists now are obsessed with MMA. That's cool. Just like martial artists of later years were obsessed with kung fu and karate and um, krav maga and uh, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and. Uh, Chun had a little run for Chun, a while. Chun, uh, Kenpo had a run with, uh, what's his name? Jeff Speakman. Mm -hmm. I met that guy. That's an interesting story. So, all these, all these, you know, different runs, right? But, uh, but through it all, what are we gaining from it? Other, other than being entertained. Yes. What is the goal? For me, it was always survival and combat. You know, survival was the number one. Effective combat for the purpose of survival. I don't want to get hit. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to exchange blows. That was my Muay Thai experience. <laughs> it's like we're gonna Exchange kick each blows. other. We're gonna kick each other, and then we're gonna punch each other. I was like, "How about I punch you and I kick you, and you don't get to do that to me? Wouldn't that be cool?" That'd you know? be ultimate. Um, so technique, technique of, of the week. The week. Normally we talk about combat during the fire stories and stuff, but uh, sometimes training itself can be combat. Yeah. Especially when you have uh, a sensei that is, uh, we'll just call him extreme. So when, uh, when I was training, coming up through the ranks, my sensei made this announcement that we were going to go underground. What that meant was uh, we had our hat at trying to draw the public into training in the classical arts, classically derived arts, and we're done with it. Which is kind of something that we're doing at the dojo right now. It's kind of a rebirth of that world. We're just kind of, kind of, it's not that we're refusing new students, but we're just kind of keeping to ourselves. We have enough members, we're excited with the members that we have, and we're not really putting ourselves out there as much as we, as we once were. Flyers, we're not advertising. So my sensei says, we're going underground, really underground. So we all kind of get excited about it, like it's going to be some serious training. He says, uh, we'll be training at Jordan Park in Allentown. It's like, all right. And he gives us the times. And that's going to be our new dojo. We're going to train at the park. All right. So I go there. And I go there half an hour early. I'm stretching and everything. I'm half an hour early. Sensei shows up. And he says, where the heck is everybody else? I, go, I don't know, Sensei. You know, you said under the big, you know, walnut tree, Wooden Park, this time. He says, all right, well, since you're the only one that showed up, he says, we're going to have a special class. It's going to be just for you. He says, I will give you the option. Would you like to train in the sun? Or would you like to train in the shade? And I thought, just just because who my sensei was at the time, I thought this is a trick. 
this is a trip. <laughs> I would like to train in the sun. <laughs> right? So, uh, <clears throat> so he says, no, you wouldn't. I'm going to let you train in the shade. And I said, no, Sensei, I would like to train in the sun. He says, it is brutally hot out, and you will sweat like crazy if we train in the sun. So that's okay. That's all right. Because I know this you is a trick. I don't know how this is a trick or why this is a trick. I just know that this is a trick. Oh, wow. And I'm going to get it somehow. I don't know why, but I know I'm going to get it. He says, no, 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 no. I will grant you comfortability. You will train in the shade. All right. So we go under the black walnut tree. If you guys know anything about Pennsylvania and the kind of trees that we have, mm -hmm. we have black walnut trees. Black yeah. walnut trees. My dad just collects those walnuts. That's strange. Yes. It's a West Virginia. <laughs> okay. Black walnuts. They they almost almost the size of a baseball. They produce these green orbs. Break them open. There's nuts. In the and there's nuts in the middle. I used to hit them with bats and slice them with swords, and it was a lot of fun, all kinds of things. But the thing about a black walnut tree is if you have one in your yard, you can't have a nice lawn. Mm -hmm, that's true. We had one in our backyard lawns also. And yeah, the lawn's awful because the black walnut tree tears up your yard because the roots are surface roots. You might not see them at first glance, but they have they, they take over the top of the soil and they have these knots that are about the size of a fist that pop up every once in a while everywhere on the ground. Mm -hmm. They're like earth veins, I call them earth veins, kind of like wave up and down. Up and down, they're in and out. Mm -hmm. So, I get to train in the shade. Since it locks me up, throws me, boom! I break fall, boom! Oh. He goes, he says, uh, you miss those mats of the dojo, don't you? Wow, wow, he's so evil. And I'm thinking to myself, no, no, I can break fall outside. I mean, Sensei used to, sometimes Sensei threw me on pavement. Macadam, you know, he'd lock me up, throw me in the street. He'd say, you got to be ready for anything. So I'm thinking to myself, no, I don't miss the mats. That really did hurt. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, that, that did hurt, but it's grass and it's dirt. I, I don't understand why it hurt, you know? I wasn't really thinking. I was like, I don't know, maybe 17, 18 years old, maybe. Locks me up, throws me again. Oh! Bottom of my leg is killing me this time. Locks me up, throws me again. Oh, my ribs! Locks me up, throws me again. Oh, my shoulder! I can't get this break fall right! What the heck? I'm not like, I'm, you know... One thing, when you get thrown every day, you get 50 throws a day, you know, you, you, you pride yourself on your break fall because that's what keeps you alive and you're, that's what keeps you moving and that's what, you know, doesn't wake you up in the morning. And when you have a bad break fall, you wake up in the morning, ah, when you have a good wake, uh, good break fall, you get to sleep in mm -hmm. until the alarm goes off and you're like, ha ha, <laughs> you know, I got a kick butt break fall, for those of you that know what I'm talking about. So, uh, sure enough. Um, I, I get thrown again and again, and then, then I get clocked, and I'm sure that somebody punched me in the head when I was going down. Hmm. I'm sure of it. Sensei says, you didn't tuck enough. Hmm. You know, chin to chest. Every judoka knows this. The extreme aikidoka know this. And, and the, you know, the jujitsu guys, they know this. Chin to chest. Breathe out. Force the air out. You know, and you break fall. I'm sure that I broke fall right, but it did feel like I got punched in the back of the head. Mm. So I'm like, what the heck is going on here? What is going on? And I start looking at the terrain. The grass hasn't been cut in a little while, but there are wooden fists <laughs> coming up from the ground. Oh, God. These knots. These wooden knots. And he pre-planned to throw you all these damn knots. Is what's he, crazy. He had that planned out. Damn. Why don't you, why don't you train, the train in the shade? The sun is so horrible. It's so bad. Damn. And the way he said it, I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> I want to train the sun. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
afterwards, I got welts all over my body because I've been taking wooden fists. <laughs> you know? As so long as he can throw me, I'm taking wooden fists to the body. Damn. And, uh, and then I said to him, I don't understand. What was the lesson there? And he said, maybe we should have some more classes outs outside in the shade so you can figure it out. <gasps> and I was like, uh, I got this figured out. <laughs> I got... I, I will, uh, next time we see each other, I will have it all figured out, you know, I'll come up with a reason, a thousand reasons. Um, I don't know if every, everyone else in class was aware of this, mm -hmm. and, they, and they avoided class. Oh, they probably didn't do it, you did yeah. I don't know. <laughs> if he was going to straighten me out, or God knows what the, what the plan was there. But, uh, it definitely rings in my memory. I would say... I would say old. I think the moral to the story is old school sensei don't just teach; they torture. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. Maybe he wanted the day off, and he knew that students wouldn't show up. And, but you just didn't know. You're the only one that showed up. I didn't know. I just thought old. He's probably like, oh, I'm gonna have a day off. Oh, we have someone that wants to learn about tree knots. I guess. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that was a thing before I joined. Oh, I didn't. But there were a lot of younger students that were younger than me. Maybe yeah, I had no idea. Maybe the old, yeah, maybe the older students clued them in or something. Didn't clue me in. Don't no. tell the white kid. Yeah, well, well, you were well, I, I, I was I, the I, only I, white kid. There you go. But my sensei was white. Yeah, but, but he was he's accepted. Kind of hood. Oh. Since Smith Sensei, when I first met him, only I kind of. I felt I felt the uh, the hood stench. Not not nothing against him, but I felt that he's been through it. You know, he had that he had that smell. Oh yeah. That he'd been through it and I was like, Oh, this I know this smell. He wouldn't deny that. He's been through it all. He's lived a very interesting life. But uh just amazing. Like what are you supposed to learn from that? Yeah, but God bless I was, you. I was hiding my welts from everybody, man. Just like so they saw me, you would think that I got, I, I got jumped and just beat the living crap out of him. Because, I'm, I'm sorry, black walnut. Was he trying to get rid of you? Like, why would you do that to he, a student? He did that multiple times. He did try to get rid of me many, many, many times. That's something I would do to get rid of a student. But, uh, but to no avail, because I just stuck with it. I was like, you'll get rid of me when I know what, when I know what you teach, you know. When, wow. When you know, that's the only time you're getting rid of me. When I can when I can do the things that you do and when I don't you know. But the point is that uh, who knows, man. Who knows? Black walnut is a hard wood. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a hard wood. Yeah, it is. My dad was too excited to find out we had a black walnut tree in the backyard. I I think I believe he purchased our house just because there was a black walnut tree in the backyard. Really? He loved them damn things. It's the best How do you eat that? He he would have he would collect do you them. roast them i don't know what he i, I literally believe that i i'm pretty sure he gathered them all in one pile in the backyard yeah and he cracked them all open i remember piles of them everywhere in the backyard squirrels eat them and he'd be in the house just got nothing them up just cracking them open just wow i didn't yeah. even know you could eat them honestly yeah it's a west virginia thing they that's a delicacy huh so they have them in west virginia I always thought that was a, kind of a northern thing, black walnut. Just cracking them and eating them like he's been doing it for, I'm pretty sure he said he had them as a kid. Because I know they pick blackberries for sure. Blackberries are very popular. They had blackberry pie, blackberry this. We actually used to go blackberry picking. Yeah, with my grandfather, we'd have a bucket and we'd be going through the woods trying to find blackberry bushes and you'd find them. And you would get $8 a bucket. I remember that. It's $8 a That's bucket. That's pretty lousy. Yeah, well, that was West Virginia, man. People go picking and they get those, you know. You didn't need much money to survive West Virginia. Eight bucks was a lot. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, and it was a small bucket. It was like maybe this big. You get eight bucks for that. Yeah, I used to hit I used to hit them with a bat with black walnuts into the, into the backfield. And they're nasty. Like, they're like... Like the stink. Yeah, the, the green, the green out, outer layer of just turns black overnight, yeah. and when it gets gooey, yeah, oh, it's nasty. My mom owned a bagel shop, and 
day old bagels get hard as hell. <laughs> yeah. So you can't pick. You can't sell. Them, you know, because they don't use preservatives or anything. Uh, so I used to crack those into the woods too. Oh yeah. Feed the deer. Oh yeah. There you go. And I, I would toss them up. It's really hard. It's pretzels. Right? It's really hard. Super hard. Yeah. I could send it. Damn. And I used to take, you know, whatever the whatever I could take home, because she'd say, Dave, throw these out. All right. And I'd take like three huge shopping bags home. We didn't sell them. And I'd just crack them into the woods. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know you had a bagel store. Mom did. R and R bagels and gifts. That's pretty cool. It didn't last too long. Interesting time though. That's awesome. I got stories with that. Jeez. <laughs> Believe it or not.